Welcome to Kaiser Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. I'm Jim Goddard. Welcome back to the show, John. What's coming up today? Uh, We're going to talk about Azure Minerals, a very interesting story that has far-reaching implications for Lithium Mania 2.0, obviously not just for for Canada and uh, the Quebec James Bay region, but even for Australia itself. Why is Azure Minerals such an interesting story? ASX listed Azure Minerals came to my attention last week when it was halted on October 20th, Friday, for an announcement on Monday that it had accepted a takeover bid from SQM, the uh, Chilean producer of lithium from brines. Now, I remember Azure as one of the few ASX-listed juniors who in the past decade would uh, would exhibit at the North American conferences. Uh, these tended to be dominated by Canadian-listed companies, but Azure was one of them there. And its story was a couple of epithermal gold projects in Mexico. And by mid-2020, those projects, the market had lost interest in the Mexican plays. The stock with its 300 million shares or so uh, issued had sunk to a dime. And uh, they decided to pivot back to Australia. And on July 17, 2020, Azure did a deal with Mark Creasy. The, he's the legendary uh, Australian prospector who's got numerous world-class success scores to his record. They, they agreed to acquire four projects in Western Australia's uh, Pilbara region from him for 40 million shares. One of these was the Andover Nickel Copper Project, in which uh, uh, Creasy retained a 40% stake, and he retained 30% stakes in the uh, other other three gold projects. And this this Andover project uh, was uh, uh, quite a ways west of the main uh, lithium area of the Pilbara, the where Wojina and Pilangura turned uh, mineral resources and Pilbara minerals into into major success stories. This is more in the area where uh, Quinton Henney's Novo Resources uh, in 2016-17 uh, caught the world's attention with the Wits 2.0 story when he uh, hypothesized that these nuggets that fossickers had been finding uh, uh, with their metal detectors and, and the dirt at the edge of the Mount Robasalt uh, were in fact a, a, a laterally systemic uh, product of a similar to the WITS 1.0 precipitation event in South Africa that created those one to two meter reefs that run 15 to 30 grams per ton per ton gold. Um, unfortunately, that play ultimately fizzled because uh, at the end of the day, it seems that the uh, the nuggets uh, came from more traditional, uh, um, you know, uh, epithermal or hydrothermally emplaced deposits. Uh, that got eroded and then somehow ended up uh, as these larger nuggets rather than these uh, super fine grained uh, uh, gold grains uh, that are as thin as a hair that make up the uh, uh, gold deposits, the horizons, the laterally extensive horizons in South Africa's with Waters Rand Basin. And those you can, with when you drill it, you can assay it. In the case of the uh, 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 Pilbara uh, conglomerate uh, gold, because of the nugget effect, you could not measure this. So that play died. But Novo was still a substantial landholder in this area, looking for gold projects. Uh, the gray mining, which had been in the middle of this uh, uh, play, uh, ended up using a grid drilling system to drill into the basement, the Pilbara basement rocks, and ended up discovering a 10 million ounce system, which now supports a valuation of a couple billion dollars uh, and uh, and and Novo itself has sunk to bottom fish levels where it's even that they sitting now at a uh, sort of 15 20 cent level and has a uh, dual listing on the ASX that it just recently retained and in fact they have a property that appears to adjoin to the west of the Andover project now Azure focused on the nickel copper potential of the Andover project. Uh, and uh, it uh, conducted drilling programs, identified two 
two zones of nickel copper mineralization, about 6 million tons, not very high grade. The first resource estimate was reported in March of 2022, and another one was reported in early early 2023. And uh, uh, that helped the stock out of that 10 cent gutter up into the 40 cent level. Uh, but uh, by, uh, by, by 2022, the stock was back in the 20 cents level. Now, the company did something interesting. Uh, uh, early, early 2022, when I finally figured out the Lithium Mania 2.0 concept, uh, uh, Azure got a second team of uh, geologists to go and prospect and sample map and sample all these other pegmatites that are within this same sort of four by nine kilometer uh, corridor within the Andover intrusion that hosts the nickel copper mineralization. And the nickel copper zones, they are older than the pegmatite zones, but they all seem to have exploited the same structural zone of weakness in the middle of this intrusive, intrusive complex. And uh, they didn't tell anybody anything about it until October of last year when they said that they had uh, uh, mapped about 700 outcrops of pegmatite that did have interesting lithium lithium values and was a clean looking spodumene. And the market kind of shrugged, didn't really care. Uh, and, and they even reported that while drilling a, a nickel target, uh, they had managed to int intersect some uh, pegmatite that had spodumene visuals in the core. The market didn't care. It didn't do anything. Even though around that time last year, it was starting to go gaga over Patriot battery metals and it's a CD5 discovery in the James Bay region of Quebec. But what Azure reported attracted the attention of SQM, which approached the company to do a $20 million financing at 26 cents that would give it 19.9 nine percent of the company and Azure accepted this uh, this this deal in January and the market still kind of shrugged wondering okay I guess uh, uh, SQM is now into grassroots exploration uh, the market did not understand the implications of this uh, these three large target areas within this swarm of LCT type pegmatites um, they uh, in February of this year, Azure reported the assays for that hole, that nickel hole that had managed to intersect the, uh, the pegmatite, and it turned out to be 7.2 meters of 1.52% lithium oxide. The market still didn't care, and they started drilling in February target area one. In the middle of March, they reported visuals for the first two lithium-focused holes. Market still didn't care, but... Uh, in May, they did one of those RIU conferences, and in their uh, presentation, they showed uh, slides, photographs of the spodumene, and the market started to wake up. And at the end of May, they already had two core rigs going. They added two RC rigs to uh, start speed mapping all these pegmatites uh, uh, just to start to understand the volume of what's all going on. Uh, the market started to pick up but it didn't really wake up until June 12th when they published uh, assays that included a stunning 105 meters of 1.26% lithium oxide. And when inside that was a 23 meter interval of 3.57%. And that's when the stock started finally trading up, uh, getting up to over a, uh, over a couple bucks. And, and uh, there were rumors in the market uh, which the ASX forced the company in mid-August to put out a press release to, uh, to, to address these rumors. And they said that, yes, in mid-July, they had received a secret, uh, highly conditional bid at $2.31 from SQM to buy out the entire company, and they had rejected this. Well, once this was public, they were able to raise $120 million Australian at 240 from institutional investors. But then the stock kind of kind of stuck there and not much was really really happening until uh, October 20th when the company halted it and then on Monday announced that it had received a plan of arrangement offer 
from SQM at $3.52 for the entire company, which management had accepted, and a couple of German investment funds uh, who own almost 40 million shares. They had also agreed to vote uh, with this, this proposal. And what happened next, the stock didn't resume trading until the, 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 20, the 26th. Uh, all of a sudden, Gina Reinhardt, who we've talked about a fair bit the last few weeks, uh, who had uh, invested about $1.2 to $1.3 billion in Lion Town to accumulate 19.9% and, uh, and effectively blocked the Alba Marley uh, proposed plan of arrangement, which required a 70 5% of all votes cast to be in favor. Uh, she wasn't going to be in favor of that. There weren't going to be enough votes cast, period, to reach that 75% threshold. So Alba Marley walked away, and the stock took a 36% bath, uh, $400 million bath for Gina, and now has sunk even lower after they did a big financing at $1.80, which raised part equity, part debt to finish construction of the uh, Kathleen Valley project uh, of, of Lion Town. So Gina, who, by, uh, who had started buying the um, uh, uh, Azure stock uh, back in June when the first results came out, uh, she had about 21.5 million shares before that uh, SQM bid was announced. On that day, it resumed. She bought for $54 million, basically at 54 million shares at 350, and another $6 million on October 27th, and then came out disclosing that she had 81.6 million shares, or 18.3% of uh, the company. So we're looking at this and saying, okay, is she going to take a scupper this up? Uh, this this uh, this acquisition by SQM again. Well, this SQM bid has two components to it. One is the plan of arrangement at three dollars and fifty two cents, where they would pay out cash, and and and, and this would require the shareholder approval, and that might not come. But there's also another component, which would be a conditional on the foreign investment review board and giving the nod to just buy everything that comes its way at $3.50. So I don't think in this case we're going to see that kind of Lion Town fiasco where the stock loses a third of its value because an absolute liquidity event is torpedoed by Gina Reinhardt and her Hancock prospecting empire. And so this one is going to be also interesting because Mark Creasy still personally owns 40%. And I haven't seen anything in print that says there's a right of first refusal in favor of Azure. But if there isn't, this means that uh, both SQM and Gina could approach him to purchase his 40%. And since he is uh, by no means any dummy, he's going to make sure that he gets at least the same valuation on a pro rata basis. So this SQM bid, uh, which was at a substantial premium to where the stock was uh, on, on Friday last week, uh, this prices the entire project at about $2.4 billion. And, and this is amazing because there is no maiden resource estimate yet. I mean, we first heard about the lithium potential a year ago, and we've now seen two sets of, uh, of, of, uh, of, 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 of assay results, the ones that were published before the year end. And today, uh, uh, Azure published a glossy version of its annual report in which it shows the earlier results. And you see the more recent results as they start to understand the geometry of their pegmatites. You start seeing fatter intersections, bigger intersections. And they've come out and said, we see a target of 100 to 240 million tons of pegmatite grading from one to one and a half percent lithium oxide. Again, a world-class target. And, and this is really interesting for lithium mania 2.0 in Canada, because in September, Patriot Battery Metals 
published its maiden resource of 109 million tons of 1.42% and attracted a $109 million financing from Alba Marley uh, for a 4.9% equity stake at a $15.25 price that priced the Corvette project at about $2.3 billion Canadian. The stock has since sunk to, uh, was even trading below $10 at one point. It bumped up uh, up today a bit. Uh, it it's now has about a $1.5 billion valuation, which for a more advanced project, and given the 55-kilometer Corvette trend length where, where numerous outcrops of LCT-type uh, pegmatite have been uh, uh, mapped in, in, in the past few years and have yet to be properly tested, it has an identical expiration target of 100 and 200 to 240 million tons between 1 and 1.2. 5%. And it's actually got a lower valuation than what SQM and GINA are willing to pay for Azure's Andover project, which is at least one year behind where the CV5 project is today. And this, this means, I think, uh, we're going to perhaps, I don't know how the uh, SQM Azure uh, Creasy and uh, uh, Gina Reinhardt uh, uh, play will unfold. But what it's really signaling to us is that uh, groups like SQM and Alba Marley are really starting to appreciate the future demand growth of lithium. And every day we hear more talk about uh, uh, solid state lithium ion batteries. Uh, there was a, 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 pa a paper published uh, on a study that was funded by the National Science Foundation of the United States, which claims to have come up with a, a, a breakthrough for processing, for making a, the ceramic that's uh, used for a solid state electrolyte that allows a, the lithium metal to be used in the anode. So other groups are now making these breakthroughs, which are all in the sort of more the processing cost arena rather than changing the configuration or the, the amount of metals that you need to make these lithium ion batteries. We're starting to see the, the producers understand how big this lithium market is going to become. And it would not surprise me if uh, the attention of entities like SQM turn to uh, Patriot battery metals as also something where it could make a bid to take out the entire company. And the other important thing is this has important implications for the exploration efforts that are now undergoing in the James Bay region, which we now know has a world-class uh, lithium endowment. And for Australia, I mean, the, the, the center of gravity was uh, several hundred kilometers to the east, south of Port Hedland. Now we're finding out that much closer to Caratha, there is a also very rich and abundant lithium pegmatite potential. And companies like Novo and others are also going to be looking on their gold projects and seeing if these uh, if there are, are pegmatites present. And they don't quite stick out as bright white ridges as they do in parts of the James Bay region. Everything in that area has a reddish color. It's all covered with dirt and dust. So, so you do actually have to look close to see that this is a pegmatite. And then you need to also do the sampling to confirm that it's the LCT lithium enriched pegmatite. So I think uh, that whole Pilbara region of uh, Western Australia is also going to undergo lithium mania 2.0. And the very fact it took so long for people, for Australian investors, while they're going gaga over, over Patriot battery metals, to recognize what was unfolding with Azure tells you that there's been this sort of bias. Well, Australia, been there, done that. We've harvested all the low-hanging fruit. And yet here was a whole basket of low-hanging fruit which SQM recognized, and within one year, this company has gone from sort of a 20 cent price to a 350. Uh, uh, we will buy everything takeover offer. Anything new with the James Bay Lithium Area play? Next week is an important week 
for Quebec because this is when they have their annual mining exploration convention. Uh, the AEMQ puts on the Explore Conference. It's being held from October 30th uh, to November 2nd in Montreal. There's only about six or seven James Bay uh, uh, companies exhibiting at this conference. The rest tend to be either gold companies or more the equipment uh, type uh, 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 companies and the larger companies. And, and this conference, um, I, I've attended a number of them in the past decade. The first ones were held in Quebec City, and those were a lot of fun. Uh, the more recent ones I attended, I think 2018 was the last time. Um, when they moved it to Montreal, they had the conference in this uh, 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 conference center that you know feels and looks like a Soviet-style concrete dungeon. And given that we were in a bear market that was sparsely attended, it was extremely depressing to be at that at that uh, uh, Explore conference. Uh, I think this year is going to be very different. We have the maiden resource estimate from Patriot Battery Metal, which I am pretty sure will be celebrated. Uh, at, at, at whatever festivities they have there. But we will also have a lot of talk about how the James Bay region now has legs for exploration, and the driver is the lithium potential, and uh, th this will also drive you know, possible discoveries in base metals and, and precious metals uh, as a byproduct of looking hard for the, uh, for, for the lithium uh, targets. Uh, this year, of course, has been very frustrating because what was going to be one of the biggest boots on the ground summers ever got killed when the forest fires broke out in Quebec and in early June and everybody had to, had to get out. They, some of them were able to get back in, in sort of mid-August, uh, and some of them who did get back had to take off again between September 15th and October 15th uh, to um, you know, allow moose hunting season to unfold. So only a fraction of the prospecting got done. This whole Lithium Mania 2.0 play basically lost a year. By now, the company... Sh who, who, who put boots on the ground should be reporting how many outcrops they have here or there. Uh, uh, they should be preparing for drill programs, some of them even drilling right now, a lot of them preparing for drilling in the first quarter. But as a result of the forest fire closures, there's only a handful drilling right now. The one on whose eyes everybody are right now is Brunswick uh, Exploration, which started drilling the Mirage over a month and a half ago. Uh, the Mirage is a substantial field of outcropping pegmatites with visible spodumene. They've never reported sample grades uh, such as we saw with uh, Azure's uh, and over pegmatite field, but it has a similar, similar scale and uh, they have a drill program going. The company has a valuation of about a couple hundred million dollars. But when you saw how fast Azure Minerals um, and Dover Project finally caught the imagination of the market when they started delivering drill intersections and people started to see how it hangs together, we are at the threshold of this happening at Mirage. Now, we don't know at this stage if it does hang together or is a bunch of spotty little uh, randomly oriented uh, pegmatite dikes or if these are substantial bodies. I suspect on Monday we will see a press release Monday or Tuesday from Brunswick Exploration updating on what they have accomplished. In fact, I think we'll see press releases from a number of companies talking about uh, 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 what they have accomplished so far, because I think the buzz at the Explore conference next week will be completely about the lithium potential of the James Bay region. Now, whenever there's a conference like this, we always get excited and say it's going to really kick things off and, and so on, and then it never does. But maybe this will be the exception. Maybe there will be so much buzz and the Canadian media might actually cover it that the uh, the general public, which is sitting on the sidelines, um, will, uh, will, will, will start coming into the market. And here's an example of one of my bottom fish, uh, Quebec Precious Metals. They put out an announcement uh, uh, early this week that they had 
their boots on the ground on one of their Elmer East properties. They had encountered a 40 meter by 170 meter outcrop, which has spodumene at surface. They don't know the the assays, uh, and and the, the, this barely budged the stock. But the uh, the CEO Norman Chavagny, he, he said he was his phone has been going off the hook. He this simple little news announcement has generated more calls than any time since 2018 when he took charge of this company, which merged the Sakami Gold Project into 100% ownership. He said, it's crazy, but you don't see it yet in the market. So the attention is there. The other company that's announced that it started drilling now is Q2 Metals on the MIA project. Uh, uh, my my, my, my uh, bets are on Brunswick uh, who's been drilling for, for six weeks or so at Mirage, that they give us something that uh, the market can get excited about. But Q2 Metals is the other one with fairly high profile uh, project where they have two rigs on the property. And hopefully within six weeks, they'll also be giving us visual updates of what the, uh, the, MIA, the MIA pegmatites are all about. But for most of the other projects, uh, uh, a few of them will be able to drill in the first quarter of next year, but most of the companies will be looking forward to June next year when hopefully there are no forest fires. They go back in there and do the job properly that was supposed to have been done today and set up another round of speculation for that September, October period next year after all the summer activity has been completed. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with John Kaiser. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Kaiser Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at kaiserresearch.com.